What are some of your most disturbing and messed up creatures to reside inside your mental space? Lovecraftian and other such appreciated. Bonus. What's the most horrific death you've ever run? I made a small whale-sized mermaid whose mouth stretched from her face to her stomach. She could eject and entangle enemies or foes with her internal organs, kind of like a sea sponge. Then she'd reel her entangled prey back in while dissolving them alive. That is genuine. That's, that, that's nightmare fuel. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is that's not even. That's not even cool, to be honest with you. The lord of a city in my game created the city as a giant machine to siphon power from a god that is imprisoned far beneath the ground of the city is built on. The power is focused to the room at the top of the lord's tower in the centre of the city. The Lord was about to enter the room at the top of the tower and pull the switch to absorb this collected energy, but he couldn't bear to be without his beloved wife and invited her to absorb the power with him. This caused them to merge into one terrible ugh, amalgamation of their bodies and souls twisted and grotesque. The madness and horror that has affected the city is the result of this merging and birth of a new mad twin god. Oh, that's horrible. Although, I must say, I'm always a fan of the trope of, like, you know, harvesting, like, a god yeah. for, like, power. I don't know. It's one of those few tropes that it's not whenever often... I think of, whenever I think of, like, merging and... Uh, Chris Chan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris Chan. No, but whenever Chris I think Chan's of, like, ultimate form of the merge. Whenever I read that, you know what I envisioned? Remember Peter Kay's monster in Doctor Who? Oh yes, <laughs> that absorb and yeah. that their faces. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that thing was horrible. I'll throw it up on screen for you guys that don't know. It was, oh, it was horrible looking. I'm creating a type of spider creature for a Delta Green scenario that is able to infect homes with itself by devouring someone, and use the series of stolen homes as a massive web from which it can pluck its victims from. You'd open a window that should lead outside, but instead leads to an open hallway. You try to get outdoors, but you'd only end up in different houses. That is until it tracks you down. I love that. Oh, that's that's really good. good. Okay, what, what's that artist? You know, with all the staircases. The staircases. Yeah, that's, that's, that's kind yeah. of what vibe it's giving yeah. me, you know. But a massive spider's web. Yeah, oh. that, that's pretty cool. I like that. I wanted a post-apocalyptic tech vampire. I created a group of synthetic hearts with bunches of needle-tipped parred tendrils. Try saying that with fucking enough drink in you. Uh. Jesus Christ. The hearts could burrow into people and control their corpses like puppets. They could suck blood through their tendrils and grow in size. With enough time and victims, a heart could grow to the point that they are just a skin suit filled with tendrils and needles and blood. That's when they get smarter and get reproducing. It turns out one of my players had a phobia of needles. I didn't plan it like that. It was just a happy coincidence. Honestly, that makes them sound like, um, like almost like a form of bacteria. Yeah, I'm getting like a bacteria vibe. Yeah. The way it just like multiplies, and yeah. it doesn't really seem to have like, like a, a fungus. I'm thinking. Yeah, of. like a fungus growing. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Hydra wolf spider, chop off head, and a thousand million hand-sized spiders crawl from it. It happens every time you chop off a head. Head regenerates. Honestly, you can't go wrong with Hydra. Yeah, I love the idea of or Hydra. Anything. So. Any Greek monster, yeah. it's a good it's a good basis yeah, to start from. A several mile high wide tree planted and cared for by the gods were just a seed for the next tree. Before the priest could plant it, it was stolen by a cult leader who fled far away. But they caught up to her and a small army was about to storm the makeshift hideout. In the last act of spite, she ate the seed. The result was instead of miles of trees and forests, it was miles of flesh and body parts. Uh, why would you eat it? Oh. Why did you eat it? You knew that wasn't going to end oh. well for anyone involved. Strands of hair jutting into the sky like trees. Blue veins the size and shape of rivers. Boils and warts as large as hills. In place of caves, there are mouths. In place of lakes, there are stomach acid. You can't throw a rock without hitting an eye or a tooth or a nail. Did I just step in a puddle? No, that's saliva. Oh, and there are probably parasites in it. Speaking of parasites, the unique and protein-rich ecosystem has led to a ton of incredible fauna. For example, infiltrators are lamprey-looking creatures who crawl into your mouth when you sleep, or dead, and make themselves at home inside your brain. Then they puppet your corpse around trying to find more tasty brains. You never know if somebody you're talking to is another human, or an infiltrator waiting for you to lower your guard. I thought it was fun to come up with, and my buddies liked the concept. 
Hope it wasn't too edgelord for you guys. No, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. You know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of a circle of hell. Yeah. It's definitely a circle of hell in my (laughs) mind. (laughs) Oh, it's horrible. What's the most horrific death you've ever ran? Now, I'm pretty sure the guy he asked this question is means, like, in-game. Yeah, but... But this guy took it to a whole new level. Fuck that. Story time. I'm a coroner's assistant. Smack addict who died of sepsis due to a ruptured bile. Oh. After being hit by a car. For a solid six days, he was slowly leaking his own shit into his bloodstream. And by the time he got to the hospital... His skin was rotting and his skin was green. Oh my god, it jaundiced us times oh a million. God. It's shocking he lived as long as he did. When he got to us, he looked like a fucking plague bearer. The smell was literally the same as when a weak old body begins to liquefy. And he was alive hours beforehand. Oh my god, oh. that is... You know what that reminds me of? Remember Seven? Oh, oh. <clears throat> you know the, the scoff? So you're a... Oh, disgusting. I ran a creature once where they found what looked like an obese man dead on the ground. And only when they got closer did it expand and reveal that it was a human centipede coiled up. Not the shock movie type. Imagine a human body, but the space from the collarbone to the nipples was repeated a dozen times. Just two dozen arms, dragging it around to find its prey. And when it gets its prey, it pulls it under and pummels them to death with all of its arms before being eaten whole. My players didn't like it. Honestly, that's almost worse than the movie. <laughs> that's, that's genuine. Haunting, that is actually worse haunting. than the movie. Imagine lying in bed and this boy fucking sobbing <laughs> into your room. <laughs> I would say that's definitely a lot more Lovecraftian <laughs> for a human centipede. I'll give it that. Hyugas. Night creatures look pretty much like pick related. So it's either Mothman or Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> Honestly, Jeepers Creepers was terrifying. Jeepers Creepers scared the <laughs> shit out of me. Yeah, I was a child when I watched it, see so that, don't judge me. See that me. morning star with the belly button on <laughs> <laughs> They fly around valleys and dark, cool areas looking for prey. What do you mean cool areas? Like nightclubs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely nightclubs. <laughs> or skate parks. <laughs> yeah. If they want, they admit a strange pale light that can be seen from afar. Mothman. <laughs> the closer you get to the light, the more you feel drawn to it, hypnotised by a moth to the flame. For fuck's sake, it is Mothman. If you're several miles away, you may feel like chasing it. This feeling increases the closer you get to them, which is especially dangerous on the cliffs and mountainous areas because you may lose your mind and fall off a cliff. When you're close enough, to see the light is to die. Unless you're extremely focused on something and have very strong will, you'll simply want to contemplate these mysterious dancing lights. That's when they will surround you and slowly drain fluids and vitae with the strange tendrils inside their mouth. These creatures can live thousands of years and can actually use blood magic and appear every 17 years after that. (laughs) Is it 17 or 24? I think it was 17, I'm not too sure. (laughs) They hunt in groups and are extremely patient and cautious, but if wounded, they will retreat. They will hold a grudge like no other. Though, it may come back to abduct your grandchildren if you ever manage to wrong or hurt them. I wonder if this is what Greeper, Greepers, what cheap, Jeepers Creepers. Was that actually the stroke? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what it, they were, if this was what they were based off. It wouldn't. Because it, it sounds like it them. It does sound like it. You know, it's kind of giving me like a vampire vibe almost. Mm, Not quite yeah. vampire, but like a spin-off version. You know what I mean? They cast a myriad of horrible curses and haunt people's dreams but they rarely bother. Sometimes they cast visions into the heads of certain people, making them see or not see things. Lesser creatures, from one to a small pack, can be fully controlled by the Hyugas. They use this to lure and confuse large groups of people so that they will be easier to pick up one from one and devour. The elder ones can read minds and they won't die. You can't truly kill a Hyugi. The sun weakens their powers. Like a vampire. (laughs) Vampire (laughs) spin-off. They reproduce by laying eggs inside the person's chest. They keep that person alive with a strange substance they fabricate. And the eggs feed on the victim's vitae until they die. This process can last decades. The worst part of these creatures is their superior but inhuman intelligence and longevity. As well as their patience. Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers. Where'd you get those people? It is giving me... Have any guys seen the new one? It was actually 
comically funny. It, it was, was comically bad. It was. I think it, it, it knew what it was. It was actually really good. If you guys get the chance, go ahead and watch it because I'm just getting flashbacks from that movie. <laughs> yeah. You know? Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. (laughs) So either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. (laughs) And, like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking, so once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. Milkman, and not the type that fuck your mum. <laughs> the result of a prototype nanovirus gone rogue that tried to turn humans into cows or cows into people. If you picture what you might get if a human was stretched into the shape and size of a cow, you'll get a milkman. A bovine face. Mouth filled with dainty human teeth. Each finger is like a long, thin hoof. Although covered in fur, they have human-like hair upon their heads. This is terrifying. I don't like I kind this. of want to draw it. Their human eyes betray a sad intelligence. They are often observed trying and failing to braid or comb each other's hair and stacking rocks. Okay. <laughs> What's up with the stacking rocks? Why stacking rocks? rocks? The magical realm features. They have both cow udders and human breasts. Both are oversized and constantly seep milk. Get mummy milkies. <laughs> Big fat mummy milkies. <laughs> because of this, they are basically in constant pain. And although they can milk themselves or teach each other, it's more productive to get things with actual hands to do it. Their milk is extremely nutritious, and a pint or two is all an adult needs to consume in a day. Unfortunately, their milk contains dormant traces of the nanovirus, like mad cow disease. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, once they reach critical mass, activates and transforms the individual into another milkman on about a day. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not having no milk in my cereal then. Sweet no, as. I don't like milk anyway. Yeah, so you're, you're good. I'm fine. In general, people are unaware of this, as those afflicted are driven to get out of sight and away from people by the nanovirus. Thankfully... They give most people the creeps so they are only kept as livestock or pack animals by the truly poor or desperate. They're comforted by the presence of people, however, and will usually seek out and adopt communities and need to be driven off. <laughs> oh, oh no, no that's pr- I feel bad for them now. Oh, no, I wouldn't remember what they look like. Yeah, I know, but like, look, they just want friends. A <laughs> guy coming up with a Karen haircut on. <laughs> <I know. laughs> with the teeth. <laughs> you like my milk? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can they speak then? I, w- I want them to speak, but in very broken English. <laughs> come on, let's just make it up. Yeah, come on, they speak English. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> you want my milk? <laughs> That's not broken, it's more like milk, you want? <laughs> milk, you want? It's not in- they're not Indian, I can for a When writing them up, I didn't intend to have the magical realm parts, but it just kind of happened so I rolled with it. The party encountered them for the first time last session. They were sufficiently disturbed and weirded out, so I considered them a success. Why the fuck could you not be disturbed by that thing? With the Indian accent and to top it off? Jesus Christ, I can't imagine anything worse. There's a creature in my setting called Midobo. Mido literally means fear in Portuguese. Bo comes from Box, Box of Fears, who is basically a walking completion of phobias. It can take multiple forms, but for humans, it's rotting, disgusting corpse who spits spiders and scorpions at his targets. He's fast, and if you look into his eyes, your vision instantly goes black. When he catches you, he takes a black cloud-like form, where you can only see his face from afar. While you feel the sensation of being locked in a box smaller than an elevator, feeling the sensation of multiple centipedes, scorpions and spiders crawling on your most vulnerable places. Excuse me? I don't want a fucking spider up my arse. (laughs) (laughs) Not the bomb. (laughs) No! No, This is a safe zone. (laughs) So your most vulnerable places, while all you hear aside from them walking all over you, are screams and fingernails on a chalkboard. No one knows its origin. But the more you think about him, the bigger the chances of having an encounter. He only appears once in a game though, 
The players are mentioning his fear of the ocean and how scared he was of doing a quest there. He said that shit so many times I asked them to roll a d100. If they roll anything between 90 and 100, they would encounter him. 93. Oh, what no, are you, literally the no, chances. I call bullshit. Everyone knows the higher the number, the better it is for the players. <laughs> right? Turn that shit to a 1 to your 10. <laughs> Guess you're fucked then. I described him pretty well while playing sounds from my cell phone. Dude literally asked to stop because it was too late and he wouldn't be able to sleep. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> he looked shook for the rest of the game that day. The other dude called me the other day saying that he couldn't sleep too because he fell into a loop trying not to imagine the damn thing while imagining it more. They never said anything like that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not. It is, a, it is a good creature though. I like yeah, this creature. But it would also make your players, like, their characters stop having the fear. Hmm, maybe. It would build more courage up in them. Because they know if they think about their fear, like let's say if they were going to fight a dragon and your character's terrified of dragons. Yeah. They know if they think and they think and they think about this battle that they're going to be having, the more chance of this thing showing up. Mm, I'd true. rather take my chances of the dragon. I don't know. I think that's like saying simple, just stop being scared or something. You know, it's a bit more difficult than that. You know, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think down below? Flesh Colossus. Imagine a flesh golem. Now imagine it ten times bigger. Now imagine it that it's sewn together with fleshy sinew, with an articulated skeleton of mithril and infused with the collective sufferings of a hundred innocent souls, who are constantly reaching out to any unprotected mind within a mile, begging for the pain to stop, dealing psychic damage to weaker minds. Now imagine we've mounted a huge slab of iron where the right hand should be, a sword the size of two men, capable of cleaving as many. This is giving me two ideas. It's remind me of the Gatekeeper in the Shimmer Isles DLC for Oblivion. And one of those Dark Elder, like not Lax, or not Lax, but you know the, you know like the pain, the pain engines, you know, stuff like that. That's what I'm really, thi- like, that's what, I don't yeah. know, that's just what's picturing in my yeah. head with these. Boneworm. One skeleton is good, but a hundred? All trailing behind the first in a great, skittering, conglomerate, Con- conglomeration <laughs> of death rattling infused with the soul of a purple worm just to make it a more cunning predator now imagine what these things can do in a public sewer system oh no God, no thanks no emasculators you'll need a dead succubus the shell of one at least once you have that attach fine lithe blades to its stumps where the limbs should be Bang the captured soul of a succubus into the mutilated body and you have an emasculator. Acrobatic, if weaker than the average fiend. The name should give away how this creature operates. Yeah, just yeah. no. If you want to make a succubus worse, get on you. You did a good job. No, I think it cuts penises up. Or is that just me? Yes, Megan, that's exactly what it does. Does it? <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it, he's just made a succubus even worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Living rot. 20 rotten corpses in a small ooze in one cell for about a month. This thing is blackish green, stinks to high heaven, spreads disease and can shulk towards you remarkably quickly. Feed it, watch it grow. I ain't feeding that, I'm not 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 feeding feeding you. Festerling, effectively a mane that has been left to its own devices for a few years in a dung pit, fed on viscera and a few alchemical concoctions. What emerges? We call a festerling, as it is a literal shit demon. It hurls filth, and its bite carries infectious filth. Absolutely vile. Abortive abomination. This reminds me of the um, the ones from the... Oh, the botchkin. Botchkin. Yeah, yeah, botchkins were good. I liked them. In the early days, our necromancer came into the possession of a dozen or so slain babies. Six weeks later, and it came to pass that, yes... You can fit that many severed limbs into a detached torso. Oh my god. Two heads, each with one eye. The final product was almost insectoid. We agree never to make another. Yeah, no, (laughs) definitely. That sounds sounds dreadful. Like, seriously, guys. So, guys, have you ever made any, like, nightmare fueled infested homebrew monsters? Yeah, let me know. I think these were pretty good. These were very good. good. I think a lot. I, I, I would be interested in using these creatures. Yeah. I think they've got a lot of... They, you could do an awful lot with them. Yeah. And I feel like horror is something that's so hard to pull off. 
in tabletop games because everyone just kind of wants to meme half the time, you know? Look, no, I, he, <laughs> it's a cat. Stop it, sorry. Cat's going <laughs> us. Like, I suppose he's telling us to get Freedom. on. Just get on with it. Get on with it already. <laughs> anyway, look, guys, as always, you know, guys know how it is. Like, subscribe, check out the website. It helps us out a lot. Hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post. Oh, my God, this <laughs> look, cat. Please. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>